I'm with Ralph Fidor, K0 India Romeo. You're about to embark on a big adventure. Well, yes, we are. We are off to the um, island of Amsterdam in the middle of the Indian Ocean, French island. We're going to do a ham radio expedition to the island, be there about uh, 14 to 16 days with uh, 14 people from around the world. Now, I'm guessing you're going to operate lots of bands? Yes, we will. We'll be on all the HF bands from 160 meters to 10 meters, operating uh, all modes on those bands. When you say all modes, do you want to just um, enumerate those? Sure. Uh, voice is something we call single sideband, which is like normal conversation using your voice. We use Morse code, which we call CW, and communication is carried on that way. And then there are the digital modes. Uh, the digital mode we will use is radio teletype. So we'll be concentrating on those three modes. Now, you are the team leader. How did you heard this uh, bunch of stray cats and get them all uh, to uh, Perth so that they actually could actually get on a boat and uh, and make it here? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, the first thing I look at is the individual himself or herself and how they can get along with people in close quarters for an extended period of time, perhaps under strenuous circumstances. Then I looked for other characteristics like uh, how good a radio operator they are, uh, how physically fit they are to do something like this. And after I've done that, I end up with uh, surprisingly few people. And I think uh, I've got 13 additional team members here who fulfill all those categories. And uh, I think we're going to do this thing with those folks. Now, you're uh, planning to embark uh, on a nine-day boat journey. Um, uh, got any trepidations about the ocean between uh, here and there? <laughs> well, personally, I've been in some pretty rough seas, so I am not too worried about myself. I do have some uh, team members, however, who do experience a fair amount of difficulty in, uh, in rough seas and have been seasick. They are, however, willing to uh, take their chance, try to do this again, and in our back pocket, we have a little medical kit to, with some supplies to help those folks along. Any rubber hammers among those uh, kits? <laughs> well, we have some medical hammers among those kits. <laughs> I'm told that uh, with seasickness, uh, at first you think you're going to die, and then you're afraid that you're not going to die. <laughs> That's very true. There's, there's a tremendous uh, amount of misinformation that comes into a part of your body called the brainstem or midbrain, which... Uh, uh, gets totally confused, results in nausea, vomiting, disorientation, and generally uh, feeling really, really lousy. Now, you've been an amateur for a while. Uh, when did you first get your license? I started as a teenager back in 1961, and I've been pretty much active ever since. Who uh, put you up to it? Well, um, I had a science teacher who initially got me interested, and then... Um, uh, I learned that our mailman was a ham radio operator. So on weekends or on Saturdays, I would go out th to the end of my driveway, wait for the mailman to come, ask one or two questions, and then he'd be on his way. And after about uh, a year and a half of talking to the mailman, I eventually had enough knowledge to get my license and get started. You've made uh, a fair few contacts over the years. Um, what was your most memorable one? I would say probably the most memorable one would be uh, expeditions to the island of Peter I, which is in the, uh, the Antarctic, uh, down uh, below the uh, 60th uh, parallel. Uh, basically living on a glacier, uh, putting up with snowstorms, high winds, uh, cold temperatures, and uh, access to the island was very difficult, required a helicopter, and of course the helicopter has difficulty flying in those situations, so it's a bit tenuous uh, getting off and on a, uh, an island like that. And that's probably the one that stands out most in my memory. And how many contacts did you and your team make at the time? I believe on that one we made about 80,000 contacts. Over what kind of period? Uh, over a two-week period. So are you, all your de-expeditions two weeks? That is uh, roughly the time frame we do them in. Now, some of them uh, uh, we might categorize as a little more pleasurable. Uh, for example, I went to the country of Bhutan and only spent six days there. But in general, uh, major expeditions, we like to spend at least two weeks and uh, cover at least two weekends so people have the time to work us. Thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure. That was Ralph Fedor. Um K0 India Romeo. I'm Ono, VK6, Foxtrot, Lima, Alpha, Bravo.